Today on The List, look into the future of skincare, celebrate iconic black directors, and how carefree dating can help you find the fun in relationships. It allows you to enjoy the experience more, get some laughs, and you get a chance to see if a person actually has a fun side. Plus, make your own passion project your real moneymaker. You have to make it into something that is bigger than you. But up first, why your diet may be working against you. It's your life, it's your list, and it starts right now. Hey everyone, I'm Jimmy Rhodes. And I'm Christina Guerrero. Okay, most people tend to put on a few pounds over the winter and our natural reaction when we realize spring is coming maybe is to eat less to look and feel better. Okay, that's no fun and not always healthy either. Well, here's some good news. There's a new theory that doing the opposite may be the best approach. I mean, we really do have the best stories on this show, don't we? How to lose weight by eating more is our featured story at the top of the list. So many of us jump from diet to diet, trying to find something that works. But have you ever thought about eating more to lose weight? So many of my clients who struggle with their weight come to me and say, I need to eat less. You've got to help me eat less. And I always say to them, mm -mm -mm, you need to eat more. Dr. Sam Rader is a former therapist who works to help people form better relationships with food and themselves. Our relationship with food is really about our relationship with feeding ourselves. So it's really about how we feel about the self and how we feel about our hunger and our needs. And so the relationship with food represents so much more than just the food itself. She has some tips on shedding pounds that might surprise you. For starters, eat three full meals a day. We need three high calorie satisfying meals a day in order to feel full. If we don't feel full, we keep eating. That's how that works. She says a lot of problems can start by limiting ourselves. It can happen in a few ways. It can happen by literally not eating all day or just eating little tiny bites or snacks or grazing. But it can also happen by saying, I'm just gonna eat a salad today. That's all I should eat because I know I need to lose weight. But guess what happens when we just eat a salad? We're hungry. Her next tip might sound simple. Eat until you're full. When we feel full, we don't feel like eating. And that's how we maintain a normal, healthy body weight. And not to mention, that's when we feel full inside. We feel satiated. We feel whole. We don't feel empty and like we don't have enough. So how do we know when we're truly full? Dr. Sam says you need to find and feel your stomach. And a lot of us don't know what fullness feels like. Most of us do not even know where our actual stomach in our body is. She has an exercise that can help. Get a glass of ice water and start to drink it. Feel the coolness in your mouth. Feel it go into your throat. Oop, there's the coolness. And start tracking where the coolness is and keep sipping. You can track the coolness going down, 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 all the way to that stomach. It might be helpful for a little while that when you're eating your meals, you drink a glass of ice water with your meal so you can really start to notice where the food is going. Dr. Sam says if you stick to it, you should see results. The really cool thing is once you've practiced what feeling full feels like for maybe a couple of weeks, it just becomes intuitive and you don't even have to think about it anymore. You just naturally stop eating when you're full. You're going to develop an entirely new relationship with food and your body. And I'm so excited for you to experience that. Dropping pounds by getting in touch with our bellies and filling them up is at the top of the list. File this one under good problems to have. Your side hustle is a huge success. But the fact is when it comes time to hire employees or contract with outside vendors, it can be tough to grow beyond the basement. So we're looking at how to make the leap from a side hustle to a bigger business. In a recent survey by LendingTree, 44% of Americans report having a side hustle. But according to the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, 90% of startups fail within the first 10 years. So even side hustles that bring in serious coin aren't making the transition into real full-time businesses. To go from passion to profits, you have to grow it out of your basement and you have to make it into something that is bigger than you. Hidden Rules expert Ashley Armstrong's helping make the transition from passion to profits. And her first pointer, Get help. When you have a side hustle, you are doing day and night 
three o'clock in the morning, whatever it takes to get it done. Even if that means slogging your way through dozens of YouTube tutorials to crank out a single QuickBooks invoice. New entrepreneurs start off hot and heavy and excited, but get super bogged down by the daily tasks and having to constantly learn a new skill set to make your business go further. It's exhausting. And unsustainable. Help is like the best thing you could possibly do for you and for your business. Just look at your local grocery stores, your restaurants, your retailers, some of the biggest guys, Microsoft, Apple. It's not one person doing the job. It is multiple people doing the job to make sure that the entire business moves forward. So to join the ranks of established businesses, you'll need to assemble a team too. And don't just hire your cousin Lenny because he's between gigs and works cheap. A lot of people try to find someone who's not exactly qualified for the job. They're not willing to put up the dough and have the best person possible to get the job done. Hey, if you want to go pro, you've got to hire pros. Hiring someone who already knows how to do what it is that they're supposed to do because they're an expert in it. And that's expertise you can learn from. You should be hiring people that are experts in their field so they can tell you what needs to get done, not the other way around. Hiring that first lawyer, accountant, or social media expert is a gut punch, a chunk of overhead you've never carried before. But the end goal for this stage of growth is to create systems that protect your passion. That tipping point of knowing, okay, something needs to change, is when you are no longer wanting to work in your business. To prevent the procedural stuff from overwhelming that spark that inspired your side hustle to begin with, take an inventory. Really understanding and knowing what you love to do, what you like to do, and what you absolutely hate. Get a piece of paper, write the columns, I love, I like, I hate, and write those skill sets down or those tasks that you have been doing in your business. And then you can go and find the appropriate person to handle those tasks, which will allow you to keep your passion alive and well. Our likes usually align with our aptitudes, so creating space for your passion means nurturing your competitive advantage. You have to ask yourself, what is my zone of genius? And when you're really enjoying what it is that you're doing, there's no way around it. People are going to absolutely love what it is that you have to offer them. We're moving your side hustle from passion to profits. Well, the challenge in any long-term romance is keeping that spark alive and having fun after the novelty wears off. Well, there is an answer. Hattie Dijamal is looking at how couples can go easy on adulting and be carefree. <laughs> Most of us remember the 1988 hit movie Big, where Tom Hanks plays a 12-year-old boy who wished he was big. Once he met grown-up Elizabeth Perkins, he reminded her how fun it was to be a kid. What were you like when you were younger? I wasn't much different. Couples coach and author of Dating Advice 360, The Ultimate Hack to Getting What You Want, DM Woods, encourages couples to get back to the carefree days of childhood when it comes to dating. Dating has gotten so adversarial, serious, monotonous. There's never been a better time to switch it up and date carefree. It doesn't matter if you are in an existing relationship trying to spike it up, or if you're just out there dating in the talking stage. For starters, enjoy open play. He says it allows you both to open yourselves up to lighthearted, youthful fun. Open play could be anything from Dave and Busters, maybe you have a main event, Chuck E. Cheese, a trampoline park, or even sports arcades in your area. And he says most of us don't think about places that we may take kids as places that might be fun for us. When we think about what it is to be an adult, especially now in 2023, we always have something on our mind. But when you're jumping on a trampoline and you're living carefree, those things are not boggling you down. Next, he says try an out-of-the-box adventure. For instance, pick a sport like golf, but in this kind of golf, there's no need for a tea time. Miniature golf, you can create your own rules, you can create your own scores. It allows you to be able to have that carefree approach to truly enjoy your day. Other adventures include skating. It could be fun, it could be cool. Maybe you fall down while you're doing it, but you don't hurt yourself. I think adults sometimes can get a little bit too serious. Lastly, he suggests checking out local fairs. You never know when there may be a circus coming to town or maybe a carnival coming to town. There's also nice rides that you can do. And do not forget about the awesome food, funnel cakes, the hot dogs, the popcorn, etc. It's no better way, especially right now, to date carefree. Those nostalgic moments, he says, are just as healthy for you as they are for your relationship. 
you may actually be able to build a deeper connection with your significant other by sharing those memories or even building your own. Staying in love and carefree together. Still to come on The List, the high-tech way to protect your skin. We can see you're losing elasticity and where wrinkles might come up. And create science experiments with help from TikTok. Day one, let's build a rocket. It's a perfect day outside to make a mess. Plus, why Jordan Peele is now a groundbreaking director. All right, cut. All that and more ahead on The List. Welcome back. You know, it seems like we're always hearing about new breakthroughs in the world of beauty and skin care. Well, here's the latest wrinkle. See what I did there? Technology that allows you to basically see yourself from the inside out. So cool. Teresa Strasser shows us how 3D face scanning can help us save face, literally. When it comes to protecting our faces from wrinkles and other damage inflicted by the sun, stress, and environment, we've all got skin in the game. But now estheticians have a new tool in the fight to keep our faces healthy. It's a high-tech camera system that sees our skin in a new light. It has three different types of light that it's going to show on your face. So it's going to show daylight, it's going to do polarized light and UV lights. Diane Rieger, licensed cosmetologist and owner of Love Skin Spa in Tempe, Arizona. Let's start on the left side. Shows us what a powerful and multifaceted diagnostic tool this can be starting with a glimpse beneath our skin. It's gonna help us look under the stratum corneum. We're gonna be able to see hydration levels. We're gonna see sun damage. We're gonna see oil levels. So you can see brown spots, wrinkles, dryness, sun damage. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else you're looking for? Elasticity levels. And so if we can see you're losing elasticity and where wrinkles might come up. That's a future I don't wanna look into. Well, but then you know what to do. Which brings us to the next possible benefit of 3D skin analysis, early warning for serious sun damage. So we'll put their face into the camera and we do both sides of the face and then we will be able to see all the damage. And it's just a quick uh, couple of flashes and then we uh, do the analysis and we get to see their cellular age, their hydration levels, all of that good stuff. I bet people's faces are different because you have your driver side and your regular side. That's a fact, yeah, the driver side always has more damage. Diane says seeing the damage will encourage us to use sunscreen year round, regardless of age or gender. We'll wrap up by showing the scanner in action, a simple process that takes less than 10 minutes. So what I'm gonna have you do is just put your chin right in here and put your forehead up against that. It'll be a little bit awkward. Go ahead and close your eyes and what's gonna happen, you're gonna see three flashes and it's gonna take a picture of all the layers of your skin. Okay. Let's take a look at your sun damage. So that's what it looks like under that UV lamp. And then this is gonna highlight where the stuff is gonna be coming up in the future. She says the 3D analysis helps us come up with a skin treatment and maintenance plan. The cost for this analysis varies by practice, but expect to pay around $75. Ask your local esthetician for more information. Putting our face in a healthy light with 3D skin scanning. Okay, it's been a while since I've been in school, but if I've learned anything in life, it's that we're never too old to learn something new. We have three educational influencers sharing interesting things from their respective fields for the young and the old. Coming in at number one, Mrs. Luke's lab. Everyone knows the good old Mentos and Coke project, but have you tried it with oil? Science teacher Mrs. Luke, AKA the real life Mrs. Frizzle, is taking science and putting a spin on it. Day one, let's build a rocket. It's a perfect day outside to make a mess. Give your rocket some fuel and then prepare the baking soda. Try different amounts to see how high your rocket can go. But she's not just doing fun science experiments for kids. She also has some great adult hacks too. Hmm, maybe I'll have to give that one a try. At number two, the black food scientist. We know that drinking water is good for you and safe, but everything has a toxicity level. Yes, even water. So what happens when you drink too much water? Food scientist Brittany Towers is answering your most random food questions all in 60 seconds. Many people think of candy as unhealthy, but it can be really beneficial to athletes. Usain Bolt actually used to down a bag of Skittles before his races. And she's answering burning questions, including one I've discussed with my coworkers. Do you have to follow the Best Buy data 
your expiration date that's on a food product? The answer is, and I know you don't want to hear it, it depends. This product here says it's best by 1-22-2024. So if I don't eat it by then, does that mean I have to throw it away? The short answer is not likely. See, that's exactly what I told everyone. It's just a suggestion. Eat the egg. And last on our list of educational influencers, bird of the week. The bird of the week this week is the downy woodpecker. Downies are the smallest woodpecker in North America. They have a short bill and a blocky head. Tom Myers, who is a third grade teacher in Portland, Oregon, is teaching his followers about a different and fascinating new bird each week with tons of facts and information about what makes that bird so unique. Their song is a jumble of chips, whistles, and mews, and often includes the mimicked songs and calls of other birds. He covers birds you've seen before and even some birds you might have not even known existed. The bird of the week this week is the painted bunting. Adult males are wild looking. They have a blue head, a green back, and red underparts. You've just convinced me to become a bird washer. I want to see a grackle. Those were some educational influencers teaching us a thing or two that might be useful. A lot more to come on the list. Stay with us. We're back. February is Black History Month, so today we are heading to Hollywood, where some of the most important directors of our time are creating groundbreaking entertainment. The hosts of Crackle's new original series, Inside the Black Box, are giving us their picks of some black directors who've made an enduring mark with some of Hollywood's hit movies. Let's celebrate three black directors whose work in the industry made them household names. Action! When you look at all of these directors, the thing that they have in common is their own individual uniqueness. They're all trailblazers in their own right. Joe Morton and Tracy Moore are the hosts of Crackle's new original series, Inside the Black Box. Class is in session. And they have three notable storytellers. Check this out. First up is Spike Lee. Spike has always been a renegade. He knows talent or he knows how to reinvent talent that already exists. He made his directorial debut in the early 80s with She's Gotta Have It and has since been behind dozens of titles that explore the African-American experience, including And that's the double truth. Do the Right Thing, Malcolm X, and Black Klansmen. You just have to give him kudos and kudos and kudos for all that he's done for black folks in this industry. I got it. I'm gone. Up next is Jordan Peele. Jordan Peele made his career based on trying to talk about a particular truth in a very specific way. I can't move. His critically acclaimed trilogy of films features Get Out, Us, and Nope, where he addresses race in America through the lens of the horror genre. This is something I never would have thought of. I just think it's brilliant. I'll be talking about these days. We made this movie forever. I feel like he gave a lot of people permission to just tell their story authentically it just makes you as an artist say, oh, I could do that too. We're wrapping it up with Ava DuVernay. Just as a female director, I think she's knocked doors down. She's a trailblazer as well. And she also reaches back with female directors in mentoring them. Please, stop right there. Some of her most notable works include Netflix's When They See Us, 13th, the feature film Selma, and more. I've never seen anyone with such intense, passionate, willful, and clear direction, and yet be such a calming force as well. She is a really powerful director. I know she's doing some stuff on TV, but I'm kind of curious to see what she's going to come up with next, I'm waiting for the next film. And that's our celebration. All right, cut. Of outstanding black directors. KG, I'm a huge fan of all three, but I gotta say, Jordan Peele's Nope had me scanning the skies for months. Ooh, maybe you had Nope Syndrome. What is that? Okay, well, actually, that's not a real thing, but when we come back, we're talking about strange but real disorders named after pop culture. Last on our list is next. Welcome back. It's time for what's last on our list. Now, diseases and disorders 
are no laughing matter, except maybe when they're named after something kind of funny. We found this little gem over at Cracked.com. 15 bizarre medical disorders named after pop culture figures. For instance, Seinfeld syndrome. Oh, right, you have that. Maybe because the show is famously known for being about nothing and you talk a lot of nothingness. Uh, yada, yada, yada. It's a fainting disorder named after a guy who fainted from laughing too hard while watching episodes oh, of Seinfeld. Okay. But I see you taking shots over there. Maybe you have Grinch syndrome. Okay, that's fair. But this is actually a real thing too, mostly for women whose hearts are two sizes too small. It causes dizziness, fatigue, and makes it hard for them to stand for long periods of time. Okay, and I'll bet you this one's kind of common. Truman Show Delusion, named for the Jim Carrey movie about a guy whose entire life was a reality show. It's when people think their lives are being produced oh. and manipulated for a reality show the whole world is watching. Ooh, somewhere out there, the Kardashians are wondering, is this for real or are we all just delusional? I'm going to go with both. And, of course, we all know about Peter Pan syndrome. This is when a guy just won't grow up, but after a little digging, did you know there's also a Wendy syndrome? She's the enabler to the Peter Pan syndrome, making decisions for them, tidying up their messes. Oh, yeah and, you know, offering one-sided emotional support. You know, I almost made the comparison, you, Peter Pan, and me, Wendy, but no way, I'm definitely the indecisive, messy <laughs> one here. And I never wear tights. That we know of. And that's what's last on our list. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Tomorrow on The List, find the best deals to shop for in March. If cleaning is your bag right now, you're going to find some deals. Plus, the hidden benefits of being laid off. You rediscover who you are and what your capabilities are. And see what's in store as Disney turns 100. Disney celebrates like nobody else. Tomorrow on The List.